Hello, lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. In this super special bonus episode of Math Mondays, we are going to do a quick summary of electrostatics. Woo! We worked really hard to get to this point, and so it's important sometimes to take a step back and be like, okay, wait, what did we just do? And <clears throat> how did we get here? So hopefully you remember that we started with two experimentally derived observations. Number one, Coulomb's law, which is the equation for the force between two charges, and um, the principle of superposition, which applies to all electromagnetic forces. And from there, we got a bunch of different equations, which we'll summarize and talk about how they're related and why they're useful. So typically, in electrostatics, which is a slightly easier introduction to electrodynamics because our charges are just hanging out, they're not moving, oftentimes we're starting with a charge distribution, or rho, and we are looking to find the electric field because that allows us to figure out how this uh, charge distribution is affecting other charges. So we often want to go from um, the charge distribution to the electric field, but if you remember, that can be really messy. And so you can always use um, the integral form for the electric field, which is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, integral of script r, which is a vector, over script r squared, um, rho, 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 yes, rho d tau. So this is a general three-dimensional form. Uh, we did one of these, and even though it was a fairly simple example, this integral can get really, really hard. Um, full disclosure, I used Wolfram Alpha for that one because I don't do integrals as often as I used to. So this can be kind of a pain. So sometimes an easier approach is to be like, you know what, I'm going to take a detour and I'm going to find the electric potential instead. So you can often go from the charge distribution, find the electric potential, and get to the electric field, um, especially if you aren't dealing with symmetry that allows you to use Gauss's law. Um, so the equations to go from the charge distribution to the electric field, well, we just did uh, this one. So you have the electric field is um, defined, well, I guess I should say the electric potential is defined as the divergence, the scalar, um, the electric field equals the negative divergence of the scalar electric potential. There we go. Okay, trying to be very careful. In math and physics, you have to be careful about the words that you use. And then this equation here, which um, I didn't cover, because you can look this one up. Um, the potential equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught um, times the integral of rho over script r d tau. So this is a much easier integral because you have one last factor of script r on the bottom and you also don't have to deal with the vector script r um, and all of the components that that gives you in the integral. Um, so this is, again, a much simpler integral. So you can go from here, get the electric potential, and then just take the divergence. Um, remember the negative sign? Those are always things that I forgot. And then you can get the electric field. You also can go um, from the electric field to calculate the electric potential if you need to by kind of just flipping it and reversing it. Um, so the potential equals the negative um, line integral of the electric field. Um, da, 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 da. You also can get uh, the charge distribution from the electric potential. I like to say electric potential to confuse it from just potential because that makes me think of potential energy. Um, so this is going to be the Laplacian. So del squared v equals, I think it's negative, yeah, negative rho over epsilon naught. That arrow doesn't point there. Okay, there we go. So that's how you can get charge distribution from the potential energy. And last but not least, you're like, wait, where is Gauss's law? Good question. So Gauss's law 
allows us to get um, the charge distribution um, from the electric, uh, electric field, or when you have cases of symmetry, um, you can uh, exploit the symmetry to more easily calculate um, the electric field without knowing the electric field. And then the other thing that's really critical here is that the uh, curl of the electric field is zero. Yeah, always and forever. Woo. Okay, so three main quantities in electrostatics, charge distribution, electric potential, and the electric field. This is a vector field, which can be really messy. So oftentimes it's easier to just deal with the electric potential. Um, and you can use these equations in different combinations depending on what quantity you're starting with and what uh, you are interested in finding. Okay, so I hope that that is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions on how to apply these equations or in what situations they work. Um, and from here, we are going to be moving on to new concepts in electrodynamics. Yay! All right. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye!